Hey everyone, welcome to the video. So today, uh, like I said, I was going to go over MATLAB a little bit and I'm going to tell you um, just, or I'll explain the basics of MATLAB and uh, the uses uh, for this class and uh, what you should need to know, obviously, for the quiz on Thursday. So um, a few things that I'm going to go over today, though, are the, uh, the introduction of all the windows here, um, which you see when you open up MATLAB. Um, I'll go over computing kind of like random stuff in the command window because MATLAB, if you haven't heard already, it's kind of like a, just a big calculator. Um, or it can be kind of considered that. Uh, I'll talk about how you can assign, vari assign, uh, valuable, <laughs> assign values to variables. There we go. And um, like in reality, whether you would uh, use these windows or not. Um, answer, probably not. So. Um, I'll also talk about the command, um, the help command, and how the help command can literally help you um, in learning the different functions of MATLAB. Um, I'll talk about the lint space function, the colon operator. Uh, you don't need to write all this down if you're kind of like worried about it, um, because I will go over it. And then I will also talk a little bit about plotting in MATLAB, and I'll go over an example of a code. So. Um, when you open up MATLAB, if you're like in a lab on campus or um, if you decided to download MATLAB for 100 bucks, which is the student version that is on the MATLAB website, then uh, this is pretty much the default view of MATLAB. Um, if, you have, if you don't have a script window open, you'll have something like this. Um, if you do, then you'll have something like this. Um, a script window is just basically where you will write your code. So here I can type in kind of like anything. Um, and then I can ask MATLAB to run my code here under the editor tab. Um, however, in the command window, um, I'm able to like test, uh, test like assigning values to variables and things like that. So um, like I said, since MATLAB is a big calculator, I can just ask for, well, what is 5 times 3? And MATLAB is going to tell me, of course, um, 15. Um, but anyway, going back to the, the windows of MATLAB. So when you open up MATLAB, you should see a workspace window, command history, um, current folder. Uh, like I said, if you have a script window open, then you'll see the script. If not, then you'll just see probably the command window. Um, or while well, you will see the command window only <laughs> if that's the case. So um, where was I going? So just to talk a little bit about the different windows, um, our quiz was over this, right? Our quiz was over just the different windows of MATLAB. Um, the workspace, uh, just to reiterate, the workspace window um, tells us what our variables um, are. Um, so if I set in the command window that x is equal to 5, and it will tell me that x is equal to 5, um, the workspace window will tell me that X is a, uh, that we have a matrix and it is called X and it is of size one by one. This class thing really isn't important to us. Um, it really wasn't even important to me when I took the course. Uh, so don't worry too much about that. Um, now if I set X equal to be a matrix of one and two, so this is going to be a row matrix. Uh, one one row by two columns, then it will tell me that. So now I set x equal to um, one and two, and the size of it is a one by two matrix. Um, notice that no longer is it just a one by one matrix because I um, changed it. So if I say now that x is back equal to five, then it will change again. Um, that's pretty much my workspace window. Um, all the stuff that I'm doing, like clearing the windows, like how I just did, I'll talk about um, in a while. Uh, the current folder, this is pretty much where um, all of like other MATLAB files have been saved by me. <laughs> um, and it'll tell you like basically what folder you're in and where you can find um, and where you can pull up different um, codes and things like that. Um, let's see. 
the command history is a window that just basically tells me what I have uh, input into MATLAB. This is saved from so long ago because this this little uh, space here is tiny. Um, but you don't really need the, in my honest opinion, you don't need the current folder window, the workspace, or the command history window. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and close them. Um, I can just click there, close, there, close, and then, um, what? Uh, okay, that was weird. And this is kind of like an awkward way to view like your pro your program if you're writing like a really long program so what I like to do is I like to undock the script window and I like to make them kind of separate um, that I think that helps helps out quite a bit so in this window like I said the script window is where you will write your code where you will um, say you you can write codes for plotting things you can write codes for um, for conditions like if statements and you can um, do for loops while loops and things like that um, but we won't get into that I don't even think this semester in this class so uh, we won't worry about that um, for your quiz though I have wrote um, I have this little programmers notepad it does help a lot because it does if you're writing like code um, and you don't have MATLAB with you and you want to see like what it, what's going to look like in MATLAB um, I can like change this to MATLAB and it'll show it there but uh, this is free on the internet if you just type in programmers notepad I think it's a little better than the regular notepad because you can even use like um, not that yeah line numbers and things like that um, but anyway, for your quiz, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give some definitions for some terms that um, are involved with MATLAB. Um, I'm going to type them here. The other one that I was going to make, or the other one that I was going to tell you guys is the clear um, command, which um, I will say here in a second. But um, there will be, I think, about five or six of these that you will need for your quiz. So uh, make sure you know these, and uh, we will have a quiz a lot like the one that we had on Tuesday um, or yesterday. And uh, you should just be able to like match them up. Um, so yeah, that'll be your quiz. But anyway, uh, getting back to all this stuff, because I'm really hoping this video isn't super long. Um, but as of course, like you already know, because you can see the, the time limit on the video. Um, let's see. Okay, so uh, two functions that I wanted to talk about in MATLAB are the lint space function and the colon operator. So um, these lint space and colon operators they help me make data for a certain variable. Um, without me having to so if for example if I wanted to make a row vector um, from 1 to 100 with evenly spaced um, um, elements is what I call them um, or spaces uh, of so I want to go from 1 to 100 with evenly spaced evenly spaced by 1 so I would have for example um, I could say like if I wanted to type it out, I could say um, x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and then go all the way to 100. But that's not very efficient, right? So what the lint space command helps me do, um, if I just type out the definition,
So what it does is it creates a row matrix of C values going from A to B. So what does that even look like? So if I type, if I test this in the command window, I want to say that X is going to equal, let's say, um, let's say I want to go from uh, 1 to 100. So I'm going to type 1, comma, 100. And I want it to be, um, I want there to be, let's see, um, I don't know, 50 values. So because uh, MATLAB can't, like, because my screen doesn't extend to the right super far, um, it just kind of drops down and it tells me that columns 1 through 8 are these, columns 9 through 16 are these, 17, 17 through 24 are these, and so forth. So it goes from 1 to 100 um, evenly spaced um, elements, and which, by the way, an element is just a value or a single, let's put that, a single value, a single value in a matrix. Um, so it has, like I said, 1 through 100 with 50 different columns in there. So like I said, this is definitely a row matrix, uh, which means it only has one row. However, it does have 50 columns. Um, but this can become useful, so you have to be, but you have to be careful um, in where, in how you use this number to divide up um, going from 1 through 100. So you see it's kind of weird how it went from 1 to 3.024 um, to all these decimal values, and then finally it gets to 100. Um, but you just have to be careful how you set that up. So CLC clears the command window. Um, clear, so let's say I don't, if I ask for x again, it's going to give me that it is what I set it equal to. However, if I don't want x to be this anymore, I can use the clear command. Um, and the clear command clears any values assigned to variables. within the session. So uh, if I type clear and I press enter, nothing's really going to happen. But if I ask for X again, it's going to tell me that it's undefined um, because I cleared this um, lint space of X is equal to uh, lint space of 1 to 100 in increments of 50. So yeah, no more value for X. Um, the other function that I wanted to mention was the colon operator. Um, I hope I'm not like going too, <laughs> like jumping around too much. Um, but the colon operator, uh, let's see, I'll, I'll write it out how usually you set it up. So this is typically how you set up the colon operator, something like this. So you say that x is equal to something like this. Um, what the colon operator does is it creates a row vector from A to C in increments of B. Um, so if this is like a little bit confusing, um, A is obviously going to be a number, B and C are going to be numbers uh, here. Um, so when I say A, B, and C, I don't mean like literally A, B, and C. I mean that they're going to be some kind of number. Um, here, though, uh, let's see, I don't have an example there. So if I want to create a row vector, this is my command window where I'm like just testing things. Um, I want to create a row vector from from A to C. Let's say from one 
I don't know what this number is. It's going to be some number. To, um, let's do 100 in increments of 5. So what I should see here um, is a row matrix that starts at 1, and it should increase by 5 every single time. Um, but what it does is it takes the first number and it adds whatever this B value is, and it goes all the way to um, the last number which you have, or what it goes to, like it gets as close as it can. So if I were to set this to zero, that's not right. If I were to set that to zero, then it would actually do what I want. Um, so you have to, <laughs> I kind of missed this here, but you have to be careful where you start um, and where you end, of course, and how MATLAB will divide the matrix. Um, another like quick example. Um, here I'm going to expect, I should expect, I think, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to start at zero, um, six elements, I mean. Um, it'll start at zero and then five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Um, yeah, but that's mainly the uh, colon operator. If you have this definition, though, um, and you keep this definition in mind, you should be... Um, pretty solid. Um, I think that's the majority of what I have for this. So um, if you want to, um, actually, I might add one uh, later on, one that I just thought of now. Um, so that's what we have so far are these commands for your quiz. Um, now, all I've done so far is just put stuff in the command window and asked it to see, like, well, what is it going to tell me? But now this is like actual programming once I start writing code and things like that. So um, good habits to get into when you write code in MATLAB are CLC and clear. So those are the first two things that you should be writing, um, in my opinion. Um, CLC because it'll clear whatever is um, in this command window. So if I have x is equal to 5, y is equal to 6. So there's stuff here. Um, and if I run this code now, it clears it. So it went from, it starts, um, the way MATLAB analyzes code and the way it runs code is it does it line by line. So um, the reason why it doesn't do anything here is because of this percent sign. Um, which just puts text in kind of like a comment thing and it. MATLAB ignores that. So it skips down to line two. It sees that you wrote, um, that the user wrote clear and, uh, or I'm sorry, CLC and clear. So it's going to do that in the command window and it's going to do that for the active session. So anyway, um, the example that I have here is basically just a plotting example. Um, so let's say I want to uh, just graph some uh, values that I have for, let's say I have a function and I have a, like a set of data, a, this set of data um, can be any kind of units, it really doesn't matter. Um, let's say I have that X is a matrix going from 1 to 100 and I want it to be in increments of 0 0.2 so we have that so far which is good um, I put this semicolon here that way um, in the command window it doesn't tell me again that X is equal to this uh, now, what I mean by that, though, is that if I say that y is equal to 6 and I run this code, it's going to come up here. But I don't really want it to come up here because I know that y is equal to 6. So if I hide it with this, um, I can hide it with the semicolon and I can run it. 
And when I go back to the command window and I ask for y, it is going to tell me that it's six, but it's not going to it's not going to um, tell me again once I run this code and once MATLAB goes line by line. So so far I have that. I'll run this code. I have that. Um, I think I might have typed that wrong. Oh, it's not what I meant. Okay. Yeah. So I have uh, columns uh, one through one hundred, and it goes from one to uh, five. Yeah, so it goes from 1 to 5 with um, increments of 100, or increments of 100, I'm sorry, um, 100 different matrices within, or 100 different elements within, sorry. So I have that so far. So I have a matrix just with a bunch of data. And now if I have a function, let's say I have... Um, y is equal to x plus 6, um, I don't know, times x. Let's see what happens with that. So now I set um, y is equal to whatever x is plus um, 6 times what also whatever x is. Um, like a quick example, if I say that x is equal to 5, in MATLAB I can also say that y is equal to 5 times x, and it'll tell me that y is equal to 25. So if I run this and I ask for y, it's going to give me something that looks a lot like x, but it'll just do whatever you asked it to do here. So it's going to take each... Um, if I shorten this up to 10 and I ask for for visual purposes I ask for um, well if I ask for X and then I ask for Y so it's going to take uh, it's just gonna do this equation it's gonna say it's gonna take one here and it's going to add uh, six times whatever that one is. So we do get seven. And it's going to do that for every single different um, element in the X matrix. So now I can also go ahead and plot um, stuff into uh, MATLAB. And I can plot uh, this x and this y. Having stuff here like kind of bothers me, which is why I uh, CLC and clear it every now and then. Um, but plot is basically just graphing. So um, I can definitely plot x and y. And then I can do other things to it as well. So if I just show you that x is equal to y, it's just going to plot it here. Or... Um, if I show you um, x against y, then um, MATLAB will just pop up this kind of little figure here, and it will show you um, some kind of function here. But here it shows me some kind of line, um, but I can add just different stuff to the plot function. Um, for example, if I wanted all of the little individual points to be circles, I can do something like this. And it's a little hard to see there, but if I zoom in, um, you can see there are individual little circles there. If I wanted to make them red circles, then all I have to do is just type R and then leave the O there. But also keep in mind that I have um, these apostrophes around it. So now they're red. Um, 
it's pretty straightforward, I think. <laughs> Uh, another really important thing for graphs, though, are labels, right? So if I wanted to give the x and y axis a label, um, I would literally just type out x label, and I would write exactly what I want the x label to be. So um, I'll keep it simple, and I'll just say x values. For my y label... Um, y values and then it's also pretty good to have a title too right so so once I run this code um, if you didn't see me like click the run um, and you're the run button and you're wondering how did I run the program um, I hit F5 on the keyboard and that will also run um, I think it tells you yeah so in parentheses there at the very end it says F5 but either or work um, so now I have Y values here I have X values here um, and I have my title um, I can also make them dashes I believe but that doesn't work out since there's a bunch of values there. But it's more obvious if you use like circles because it'll show you. Um, but there are a bunch of different uh, settings that you can do with plot. Um, the last thing that I wanted to put on the quiz was the help command. So the help command will tell you about a certain function within MATLAB and it can tell you all about it in a certain little summarized uh, paragraph thing. So um, the help command, if I type in the command window help and I want to know more about plot, I can just hit enter here and it's going to tell me pretty much everything I need to know. So I can make the little circles that I had on the graph blue, I can make them green, cyan, magenta. Um, I can make them points, X marks, pluses. I can make them um, like dashed or no line or dotted if you wanted. Um, I think this is all like pretty, pretty interesting uh, to learn here. But the last thing that I wanted to put on the um, oh there it is. It was there. I don't know why I didn't click it. That the help command tells you about any function within MATLAB if entered in the command window. So yeah, this is the stuff that I want you to know for the quiz. And the very last thing, um, uh, well, that's mostly it. But um, I think that's really all I had for uh, this video. Now I know that this video, oh my god, I'm so sorry, it's 28 minutes long. Um, but that's not uh, too bad, I guess, <laughs> right, to be listening to me. Um, the very last thing, though, that I want to know is uh, um, also in the, I won't type it, but also in the V in the uh, quiz, I want you to tell me um, what shape, or I, you should know for the quiz what shape these are and what color these are, just like as an extra question. Um, okay, so that's pretty much the video. Uh, sorry, it was 28 minutes long, <laughs> but I guess you should be studying for that long anyway. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching so much, and I will uh, see you guys tomorrow. Take care.